Henry and Jane Pembroke settling into their home on Delaney Road outside Harbourview and having established a lilac sanctuary with plans for expansion, were enjoying breakfast when their neighbour Nathaniel Gaumont came rapping at the back porch door. While Nathaniel has called upon the Pembrokes this April morning of 1914 in the spirit of genuine friendship, he comes bearing something unfriendly in nature, a dire warning. Does this dire warning have any relationship to Jane Pembroke's premonition of danger for her family? And just when will the wrathful Reverend Gaumont himself call upon the Pembroke family, upon whom he has vowed to wage war, until he reclaims that which belongs to him? Annex, the continuing story of a peculiar bend in the avenue. Traffic goes north, traffic goes south. The streetcar runs between. And all we can do is try to keep up. A dire warning. You are in grave danger. I see. Well, perhaps that being the case, we should all be seated. Coffee, Nate. I'll accept it with gratitude. Being that warnings are to be given, we should move directly. Who's warning me about what? It's my father, the Reverend. Yes, the Reverend. How is his health? There's news that he has shown quite the recovery from his attack last year. That must be a relief and comfort to you? Hardly. You see, he's finally getting up and around, leaving the house again. The walks invigorate him, you see. He likes to walk due south on Delaney, and he goes further each time. And soon, he informs me, he means to knock upon your door and have words with you or your wife. I thank you for providing such gracious hospitality when I arrive bearing such sinister news. Nothing of the kind. It sounds as if the old gent is merely finally coming to make our neighborly acquaintance. Mrs. Pembroke, Jane, there will be nothing neighborly about it. I don't understand. See here, man, hadn't you best come out and say what you came to say? I tell you that my father will come to you not as friend, but as foe. The Reverend has declared unholy war on you and your lilacs. Henry and Jane Pembroke will soon discover from Nathaniel Gaumont himself the kind of man that the Reverend Gaumont truly is. He is determined, by any means at his disposal, to annihilate the lilac farm and drive the Pembrokes off the land that previously belonged to him and was sold without his approval. Will Henry and Jane heed this warning? Or will they require further persuasion? That deals the cards face up, doesn't it? The Reverend plans to lay siege to the Pembroke Lilac Sanctuary? What would he intend to do? I mean, will there be legal troubles? There will be no legal troubles, I assure you. The sale was legal and properly seen after. Anticipate not a legal storm, but a deluge of intimidation, carefully staged and savagely sequenced. Believe me, I am too well acquainted with his methods. Mate, with all due respect, the Reverend... He is due none! All respect given, the Reverend is an old man, recently recovered from an extended period of infirmity. What does he mean to do? Burn down the sheds? Jane, may I speak to Mr. Pembroke in private, please? I respect the consideration, but whatever concerns my husband concerns myself. I believe I will stay. Very well. Although what I tell you may trouble your sleep... My father, the Reverend, is a figure of great admiration here at Halfway There and the surrounding county. Part of a pioneer family, he preached the gospel and lived out here on a small farm that he built before he married my mother and they begat me rather late in life. When I was a small boy, the Reverend sailed south on a mission and was believed lost at sea. For many years, my mother and I believed him dead, grieved him dead. It killed my mother. And then he was back, returned, not from his martyred wanderings, but from a new life, 
forged in the vice and degradation against which he had previously preached from the pulpit. I fear, I, I fail to understand. He was, my good friends, a reverend in name only. He has interests in the worst social rackets, extensive questionable holdings in Harborview, and a history of dealing harshly with anyone who stands in the way of him and his greatest love. Who might she be, the unlucky creature? Not who, what? The Galmont farm. The farm that he has never worked a day in his life. It was built up from near scratch after my mother died. He prides himself on an illusion, the illusion of that working farm. It's merely a toy. When I sold you the South Tract, believing that father was near death, I, I put you at the top of the enumeration of his enemies. Well, for which we thank you, I'm sure. I must confess that had I known father would diabolically pull through and recover, I would have never sold. Not for anything would I have knowingly put you in his path, but that said, I do not regret the sale and intend to stand by it. You must be joking, man. At first he will come bearing riches, offering to pay top dollar if you'll turn everything over to him that very day. Henry, we can't. It's our own. Don't be afraid, darling. We'll not be removed. The Pembroke Lilac Sanctuary is not for sale. We've just started to find our way here. We're not going anywhere, and I regret to say, Nate, that your father may indeed be left to stew on his own. Your wife is right to be threatened, because when my father stews, his enemies die. Henry? What a- My dear, please, leave us for the moment. All will be well. Just leave us for a moment. Very well. Now, say what you really have to say. A young Methodist minister, just a few years ago, he crusaded against vice and rendered himself an irritant to Father. When he began calling for the Reverend's arrest and indictment, that's when he signed his death warrant. The minister went missing, but he turned up, floating face down in a marshland in the Delaney Swamp. Good God, Gomon, are you saying that your father had the minister murdered? I'm telling you that my father shows little restraint in the face of opposition. Don't worry about him burning down your sheds. Worry about him burning down your house with you and Jane in it. Please, all I'm asking is that you not underestimate him. Be of high caution and make preparations for his arrival. He's coming, Hank. Make no mistake of that. Next time on Annex... A man in black makes his anticipated appearance at the Pembroke door yard. Just as the Pembroke girls arrive for a visit, and just in time to fulfill Jane Pembroke's premonition of doom. <laughs> <laughs>